I must confess, I'm a little more than anxious this morning. We've had two days of a horrendous storm. The wind speed got up to 59 kilometers per hour. And while I've been over the allotment once in the midst of it, but the storm carried on for another 24 hours. So we'll see this morning what the damage is. Well, there's a lot of debris on the floor. Oh my goodness, I can see that the rhubarb's taken a bashing. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And my pyramids, well, they're no longer pyramids. Looks like the cable tie that I put at the top has just broken free, resulting in them splaying out everywhere. And this one's lost a couple of stakes. Oh, the rhubarb's amazing. It's been absolutely wrecked. It's actually broken off a lot of the stems in here and in there. And these are exactly the same. It's certainly taken a hit. When I came over to the pond in the last two days, it was actually overflowing and the water was out to here which I guess was the intention that this was always boggy, but it was interesting to see it. And there's I've probably been a water change in there now, which is incredible. What we have seen in here in the last two days is a newt, which is fantastic to see. We seem to have a tadpole on the surface. Oh, he's just, mm, doesn't look that well, that tadpole. This bucket that I left out, is half full of water. Be interesting to see what the wheelbarrow looks like. Oh, it looks like we've had a broken branch as well. This is privet and it takes a lot to break a privet branch. Looks like it's snapped right here at the end of the branch. So we'll have to clear that up. And that gives you an idea of the water. I'd emptied that and it's filled right back up in no time at all. Chickens have been fine. We've got plenty of shelter. Looks like my water pipes come down. There we are. Get that back up. And of course that is absolutely full, which is good. No apparent damage in the compost area. So I'll walk up here and see what's going on. Got a branch. I don't know whether that's broken or just, no, it looks like it's just down under the weight. Now the front of the compost bins has come forward. I'll hold that back for a while. Probably the worst thing that's happened is all of the nets got blown off and I chose just to put them on the floor and leave them because the wind was so strong. It was blowing the nets off all the time. And we had a real catastrophe here. A piece of perspex landed right slap bang in the middle of the onions, just about here, and flattened them. But they're pretty strong, and I think they'll grow back without too many difficulties. The two beds that had nothing in them stayed perfect. Murphy's Law, I think that's called. And the broccoli took a bashing. Hopefully they'll come back. This net over here has just collapsed. I'll need to take that off and reconnect it all. But it seemed to protect the broad beans reasonably well. This one, not so much. We'll see how that goes. And over here, these were fine. Beetroot is low enough that it didn't cause any damage. There was a little bit of damage on these Bedfordshire champions. And I did put this net back because I thought it was going to survive and it has, so that's good news. All in all, it was a pretty devastating storm and there was quite a lot of damage locally. Let's have a quick look at this. Gosh, look at this rhubarb completely splayed out. And plenty of the stems broken off. 
So I think I'll be collecting up some rhubarb today. A forced harvest, you might call it. And I obviously need to repair those wigwams. What I am surprised at is these covers didn't blow off. They're normally the first to blow off. They seem to have been clamped down without any problems. And my pipe from the roof of the shed tends to blow off in the really bad weather, but it seems to have stayed on okay. And we've filled that one and these two are well on their way, so that's good. Chickens have all been fine. Right, I think it's time to do a few repairs. Okay, let's see what forced harvest I've got here. That one seems to be a bit broken. Most of the others look okay on that plant. What we got here? That one's gone. That one's gone. These are absolutely huge stems and therefore I guess the leaf acts like a sail. I just pulled them off. Everything else in there looks pretty good, I think. Yep. Let's go up to this one up here. All the low growing stems are fine, but anything that poked its head up has ended up snapping. I've never seen the wind break so much rhubarb in one go. Right, I'll carry on with the rest. Well, I've put all the water that was in this wheelbarrow into these cans, because you just don't want to waste any water if you can help it. And then I can use the wheelbarrow with the remainder of the rhubarb. It's a bit random, but most of it's gone in. Right, let's get these leaves into this barrow. Now, whilst I hadn't planned to do any harvesting of this rhubarb today, what I was going to do, and I still am, is reveal the forced barb rhubarb. So we'll get that off and have a look at it. And then I'll do all the rhubarb preparation at home in one go. It'll just be a little bit more than I planned. Right. Right, so let's have a look at this here forcing contraption that I put together. I noticed that one full branch of one of the gooseberries has snapped off, which is a shame, but there we are. That's what happens. I'll put this other rhubarb down here. And I'm really surprised that this stayed up during all of that storm when so many other things blew over but I guess because it's round and it was reasonably tightly secured it seems to have survived so I'm gonna take the rope off which might take me a few minutes so rather than bore you with that I'll fast forward well, what was reassuring was that my knots stayed in place. And as you all know, I'm not very confident with knots. Right, so this really is a moment of truth. This rhubarb has been forced now for some months. And the idea of rhubarb forcing is that you take it a bit early and it's sweet and tender and pink. And I've probably left this a bit longer than usual. As you can see, a lot of the other rhubarb is also ready for harvest but here goes the big reveal <clears throat> well i think you'd call that an unmitigated disaster it looks like 
Wow, it looks like the plant has rotted in a lot of places. It's in a really bad way. There's a lot of fungus here and it's sloppy and it really hasn't done it any good at all. I gotta say, that is not how it's supposed to be done. And if you followed it, I apologize, because that's not worked. I don't know whether I've left it too long or what, but it's certainly not good. So I'm gonna pull out all the rotten material from this, which is pretty gooey in the hands, I must admit. And hopefully this plant will fully recover. I'll just leave it now. And even if it does succeed in sending up some fresh growth, I won't touch it. I'll give it a chance to really recover. And all of that is really just slime and not worth using. Shame. But you've got to try these things. If you don't, you don't learn. And I need to go back to the drawing board and see if I can work out what went wrong and what I should do next time. Oh well, the ups and downs are growing, eh? Never mind. Next on my agenda is getting all these nets back in place. Otherwise, it won't be long before the cats invade the beds. So, it shouldn't take me too long. I'll speed this up for you too. Well, that didn't take me too long. It's surprising how the wind has blown some of those nets off, but it really was incredibly strong. So I'm in here because I've noticed in the last week or so, jackdaws have been coming into the coop and eating the chickens food. And they sit on these posts, these gates, and they also make quite a lot of mess. And there's two reasons I want to stop that. One, I don't really want jackdaws, wild birds mixing too closely with the chickens, because certainly in times when there are chicken flu or bird flu around, that's something you really don't want. And also, of course, I don't want to have to keep feeding the wild birds with food that's bought for the chickens. So I'm going to put up a screen and this is just a simple blue piece of net. And I'm going to try and get it to the height so that the chickens can come and go at the bottom without any problem at all. But it should hopefully deter the jackdaws. That's the plan. So let's just see if, yeah, that's a good width. I've got a couple of hooks in here, which are perfect. So I just need to get the height right so that the chickens can come and go at the bottom without any problems and they'll go under it. Let's try that. And I'm going to just put it on with some clips. And that should deter them with a bit of luck. There we go. Fingers crossed. So you would have thought that these wigwams would have been perfectly all right in that storm. You'd think that the wind would have blown past these really thin stakes, but oh no, it pulled and pulled on them until eventually I think they snapped the fixing. So back together onto the other one so we'll take a look in the polytunnel I'd like to think that the polytunnel survived that storm without any problem and it looks to be in good order ah here we got some slight damage the thermometer has come down off of the top of the polytunnel there we are, back in its rightful place. And it's, what, 17.7 degrees in here at the moment. I've just taken a quick look at the carrots. They're all coming up nicely. So one, two, three, four, five stations. All those stations full. 
looks like one, two, three. It looks like we've got one missing there. And looks like we might have one missing here. But that's fine because we've got all these spares and we'll move them across just at the right time and they need to be a little bit further on than they are at the moment. And there's a snail in there. I've already moved two snails off of the back of that thermometer. And I can see where potentially there could be some damage in here from slugs. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, things are looking good in the carrot bed. Well, it looks like my rocket has gone to seed and I put that in far too early and it's obviously stressed in a small root tray. So that's gonna have to come out. Not much use to man or beast. So we'll have those out and it's got a really good root system on there. I might just clip that and see if I can keep it going. And exactly the same for this one. There we go. And just goes to show that these other plants not bothered by being in the pots at all. And that's Celeriac Giant Prague. And that is Celeriac Giant Prague too. So they're gonna be nice plants. What I do wanna do is get these out. And this is the dill, which I'm gonna put in my herb bed. And I think the herb bed is probably gonna be okay to get going now. So I'm going to gather together the things that are going to go in it. So definitely those. And I'm going to put these Welsh onions into that bed because they're considered to be a herb. You often see them in a herb nursery. So they're going to go in. I'm going to put one of my rosemary into that bed. What else have we got? Uh, coriander. So there's quite a few coriander in there in my soil blocks. They can go in. And up the top here, we've probably not got an awful lot else to go in that herb bed at the moment. But we'll get these in and see what they look like. So this is my Hugel culture bed and it took a bit of a bashing from the chickens not too long ago, but it'll take only a few minutes to get back together. I've noticed that some of these branches that I've put in here have started to root and it looks like black currant from pruning the black currants. So I don't know, I might leave one or two, just see how they go along. We've got one or two that are still sticking out a bit. But the main thing is to get all this compost that I put on back in place. I'm sure the chickens enjoyed moving it out, but it's not staying there. There's a little bit of grass and a little bit of self-sown sycamore from the tree. Otherwise, it's a two minute job. So let's get that back in. There we go. And this is a cow parsley and it's wild. And I don't want it in there. So that's out. My chickens are going to help me, clearly. Right. That's the bed back in some sort of order. Okay. Right, so this is going to be a herb bed. That's the plan. And whilst I haven't got massive amounts of plants, I do have some. So we've got these coriander and I think I'm going to put the coriander at the front because they'll probably come out fairly quick. And these soil blocks have worked perfectly for the coriander. Let me show you. So we've got a great root system on there and a really nice healthy plant. And this was the plant that I used the small blocks and put them into the larger blocks. That seems to have worked perfectly. So I am getting encouraged by this whole soil block experiment. Right, let's get down close. Okay, what have we got? I think I'll put these about six to eight inches apart. We've got quite a few, so we'll have a whole load. And I do like coriander, it's fantastic for cooking. And of course you can save your seed. 
And on the subject of saving seed, I've got a little bit concerned about my runner beans because a lot of them have come up, but not all of them. So after this, I'm going to be putting in the spare seed that I've got into another tray just in case they don't come up because that would be a real catastrophe. No runner beans. All right, one more here. And one more in the end. So there was just enough in there to do the whole front row. And there's just some celeriac ibis left in there now, which can stay. Right, so we've got a nice rosemary, which I managed to get from taking a cutting. Oh, wow, look at that root. So I'm just gonna tease that out a little bit. And I'll just position things to start with. I think these Welsh onions I'm gonna put in as a clump and they're reasonably high. So I think about there. And then this dill, which is extremely tall, can go right in the back. And I think I'll put them evenly spaced out across the back. So let's do those first. Fantastic root system. And I can just dig down. And of course, this Hugel culture bed is not really mature and probably hasn't even started to rot below there now. But so I just need to find holes without bumping into branches and bits of wood. There we go, that one in. And then this one. And these plants get very big. So I'm trying to keep a good distance between them. Stick him in there. Right, there's quite a lot of movement on this, but then that'll be all the material underneath. Okay, in with these onions. And these were given to me by my plot neighbor. And it's always great to swap plants between neighbors. We all grow too many. And invariably, we don't grow the same varieties, so it's nice to get a bit of a mix. And of course, if you swap with your neighbours, you can achieve that. Okay, so we'll get these in. And these are like a big chive, really. You can certainly eat the stems like a chive. And I don't know whether you can eat the root. I don't think you can. We'll, we'll see, time will tell. And onions don't like to be too close together, so I'm going to have a bit of distance between them. And this little black currant's coming up there. I don't want another black currant sort of bed, but we'll see how they get on and make some decisions about them later. Just shows how easy it is to make black currants root. Just literally bury them. Okay. And one more, I think I'll put him in there. And if I don't want these black currants, I can just clip off the growing tip and they'll just rot. Okay, and that just leaves the rosemary. Now the rosemary, it might struggle in here in the winter. I can either take it out at some point later on down the line or put it at the back and see if it'll grow to a reasonable height. I think I'm gonna choose that. I'll stick it in this corner. And there it is. So very easy. Put that dill label in there. And we're good to go. And I can decide what I put in this center area in due course. Well, that's a good start to this bed and got the right heights at the back just get something in the middle I'm thinking I'll probably add some thyme from the polytunnel and maybe some chives and we'll see there may be a bit of oregano that we can separate from the flower bed so we'll get this label in here that's for the coriander cruiser and just let those plants get established I don't need to water the potatoes today, but I did notice that 
These pots have sprouted already. So this is Desiree and it looks like pretty much all of them have got some shoots coming up now. So I just need to be aware of that in case we get any cold weather, they'll need covering. The Charlotte, I can't see any shoots on them at all, unless that's one. I think that possibly is, but nothing that's significant at the moment. So I don't think we'll get any more cold weather, certainly in the forecast. Today's a decent day, and then we've got more rain for two or three days, so shouldn't be a problem. There's also quite a bit of this horrible stuff, which has got to come out. Otherwise it gets intertwined with the onions and will cause problems. Onion family do not like weeds and this is probably gonna cause them an issue if I let it stay in there. So we're gonna have all of that out and I need to work through this bed. You can see it's coming through from this area over here. And this is typical of what this does. It twines around the onions. So it's really important to get it out. I have to work on this, I think, on a reasonably regular basis to get rid of it all. Well, weeding is probably one of the least enjoyable jobs on the plot, but no dig helps without any shadow of a doubt. It doesn't fix it completely. And these weeds in here are just starting to get a bit established. So it's really important that you get them out early. Otherwise you end up really having a struggle with it. So if you see the weeding building up, don't put it off. Try and get to it because it really keeps control. And I'm going to work my way through this bed and the courgettes are not ready to come into here yet, but I don't want it to be an enormous job when I come to plant them. So I'm going to work my way through and get rid of everything I can. And it is really relatively easy when the soil is made of compost like this. Okay, these are the biggest fellas, these docks. If there's a job on the allotment, that you find even more arduous than weeding, put it in the comments below. I'd be interested to know what people dislike doing the most. There we are, just a few minutes. And what I noticed, which was quite interesting, is that the weeds tend to be harbored amongst the clay. So the clay is really protecting them and making sure that they've got a good root system. So where there's been a lump of clay with some weed in it, I've taken it out. It's also important, whilst there isn't a lot of weed in this little patch here, just to slice through it. And that just damages the weeds sufficiently to kill them off. So if you think there's a patch that really hasn't got a problem, just slice through the surface of it and you will help yourself out in the long run. Right, that's that bed done. Took just a few minutes. Well worth it this early on because it was so much easier. Okay, I think I'm gonna do those beans next. Well, I'll show you what I mean by the beans not coming through. So this is my tray. And as you can see, we've got a fair few. This one looks like it's been bitten off, which is a bit of a worry. There's one coming up here, but there's an awful lot of blanks. The ones that I sewed in these root trainers that I've used for a long time, they seem to be a little bit better. And I don't know whether this is just a little bit compacted in these. I don't know. There's a good chance they'll all come through, but I'm not going to take the risk at this stage because that was the right amount for the place that I've provided. So I don't want to make any problems and I don't want to run out. So I'm going to sow more. I've noticed a bit of bindweed there, which is coming out. And I'll get these additional beans sown. And this is what I had left, so there's ample. And I'm not looking to keep these any longer than one season. These were the less desirable ones, and these were the smaller ones. But I'm going to fill both of these trays with compost, get them planted, 
and it'll be belts and braces. Okay, we'll have a bit of a shuffle around with space now, just to get those two trays of beans in. And I feel better already that they're there because we're sure to get enough with that many planted. I'll put these few celeriac onto this tray and they're coming on nicely. And then that'll give me a whole square of space. You can go over there, pop their label in. Got a couple of blanks there, but that's okay. That can just go onto the soil. And then that tray can be used for one of these. Hopefully this will fit in. Yep, it does. Got a little bit of cover required on one of those beans. There we go. And then the other tray can just slot in behind it. Okay, belts and braces, good times. So with these strawberries, I got a feel to see whether they're dry. And these are dry, they're not bone dry, but they're dry enough that they need a water. So you just gotta go around each basket, checking to see whether that is the case. I filled that one, that one I've done the same. This one's dry. And these are the ones with the well in the middle. So I generally just fill the well. That one's a little bit more damp because I've watered it a bit more frequently. I'll give it a little bit. This one's dry. And they do dry out fairly quickly. So if you're going away for a day or two, now that one's damp. So I'm just not gonna to touch that. And it's starting to look a bit more healthier than it did at the beginning. And I know that I overwatered this a bit. So that's gonna stay as it is. And this one's the same, damp enough. So we'll leave those, wash my hands off. And I've been thinking about those rocket. Now they have bolted, but I'm gonna put them in the herb bed and just completely cut the overgrowth off and see if they can come back as a bushier plant. That's the plan. Let's go. Right, well, we'll put these in quite a clump because I just don't think they'll necessarily succeed. Let's get them down there. Put the label in. There we go. So they've got another chance. And with a bit of luck, we'll get some rocket from it. Now these self seed very easily. So you need to be careful. And I will make sure in this bed that they don't get to the point where the flowers seed. So I'll keep them trimmed and hopefully we won't get a bed full of rocket. Well, so many of you who watched my video last time said, Mel, whatever you do, get rid of that blanket weed. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think it's really good advice. The other good advice that came with it was make sure you put the blanket weed on the side of the pool so that any creatures that have accumulated in it can crawl back into the pond. So I'm just gonna make sure that there's an easy route into the pond, which in this instance is gonna be this rock. And then I'm gonna make sure that I put the weed onto there. And the suggestion I got given was get a cane, put it down amongst it and just rotate it. And we'll see whether that works. Well, it does seem to be working, I have to say. Looks like great advice. Let's pull that up. Look at that. So we've got a tadpole in there, which I can get rid of. And then we'll just leave that on the edge there, just so that everything that needs to can get out. And I'll work my way around this pond using this method. And it looks to be fairly straightforward and very successful. So I'll speed this up so you don't have to endure half an hour of it. Well, that's me done for today. It's been a day of recovery, really. 
trying to get things back on an even kill after two days of a pretty horrendous storm. But we've got a few things done. The herb bed's underway. We've got some weeding done and all that blanket weed out of the pond feels good. So hope your weekend wasn't too disastrous and that the storm didn't give you too much damage. And I'll see you next time. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochen Bar.